obsessed with my little Squishmallow, but we're not here to talk about him today. We're here to talk about what's in my bag, artist edition, slash let's go to the park and get out of the apartment for once while socially distancing to draw in the park. So I've been wanting to go to the park for a while now, ever since I've been seeing Leo's field notes go out to the park with her boyfriend, Andrew, and it just seems like such a fun time. And it's like a safer way to get out and like exercise while being close to nature and not being stuck in the apartment all day. So I'm gonna go out and draw at the park. This is the bag that I usually use wherever I go, whether it's to mail out orders from my Etsy store or to go get groceries or to go to the park and sketch. I like it because it has a drawstring at the top and I love just chucking everything into a bag like this. Tote bags are just so easy to use and they're so much cuter than purses, so I like this tote bag. My friend Bethina actually gifted this to me. I believe it's from Innisfree when they were doing like a, like they were giving these out for free with your order, but I don't know if they sell them anymore, like as an extra. It's really handy and sturdy and I love it so much. And the little oranges have little faces on it, which makes it so much better. So much better. It's like so much cuter this way. You can also catch me walking around with this little purse, um, except this little purse I usually pair with like my tiny tiny moleskin pocket sketchbook and like a few pens. This one's from Taiwan. It's a little clutch purse with polka dots on the inside. And I also have this bag, which is a Rosetti New York bag. I have no idea what brand that is. I don't know if I should know what brand that is, but my mom passed this down to me about like five years ago and I've been using it ever since. And she's offered me multiple times to buy me a brand new bag or like a brand new mini backpack or a brand new purse. And I'm just like, but why? This is so cute. I think she's had this since she was like around my age, but I just, I don't know, I'm so attached to this backpack. Like even though there's like a small hole forming on it, I prefer just using this bag and it's been with me for quite a while now. And this actually fits a lot. This fits my iPad in it, so it's handy. Let's let's dive into my bag. So the first thing that everyone should have is a mask. And this is one of the cotton masks that I've been using since the beginning of the pandemic. And it's just like a simple black mask. If you're going out, put on a mask. Next thing I have is my iPad and I chose the smaller iPad. I believe this is the iPad Pro 11 inch. I can't keep up with all the new iPads. There's just way too many iPads, but this is her. I personally like the smaller iPad because before the pandemic, I was really into going to cafes to do work or just go out to do work. So I liked the portability of the small iPad. The big iPad is enticing, but A, it costs way too much and I just like compact things. I like to make sure everything fits in my bag. So I like the small one, it has an Apple pencil on it and it's good for emails, procreate, drawings, everything. The next thing I have in my pouch is sketchbooks. These are my current favorite sketchbooks. I cycle in and out of like different sketchbooks based off of how I feel. So sometimes I'm like, ooh, do I wanna use my Mossery one? Ooh, do I wanna use that cheap ass one I got like five years ago? My current like go-to sketchbooks are these two. This is the Ogami sketchbook and this is the Arteza multimedia sketchbook. This is not sponsored, but these were gifted to me a while back. The Ogami one is like a stone paper. So I use this for inks only and this is my like ugly sketchbook. I know a lot of people get mad at me when I call this my ugly sketchbook because they're just like nothing in this is ugly. Why are you calling it an ugly sketchbook? And I think the point of calling a sketchbook ugly is not because the drawings inside are necessarily ugly, but calling it an ugly sketchbook allows you the opportunity to make ugly sketches without feeling pressure of posting it on Instagram and like showing it to the world. So 
that's the point of an ugly sketchbook it's to let yourself experiment let yourself create without worrying about what other people will say about it and i do post the contents of this sketchbook on my patreon about once a month when i have time and it's good for inks um, the next sketchbook, the Arteza one I have, is just this chonky boy. I love how chonky it is, like it's, it just makes it look so cute. And this is my multimedia sketchbook. I usually have like one sketchbook that's all ink and one that's for color. I don't know why I do that, but it just has a Lee Luxon sticker on the front. And I mean, I just do like sketches in here. This is... This is one of the sketches that I did yesterday and it's just fun for experimenting and that's also why I like cheaper sketchbooks is like I don't feel like I'm ruining it so like in my mastery sketchbook I'm so scared to sketch in it because it's like a more pricey sketchbook but this one was cheap and it came in a 3 pack so I'm just like I'm gonna go ham inside of this sketchbook So the next thing I have is this pouch and this pouch I actually got from Taiwan. I really wanted the yellow Delphonics pouch that was like all the hype and it was like super trendy looking and like everyone had it. But I just didn't want to shell out that money for that bag. So I went to Taiwan and I saw this and the person was giving us a story about how like these are all handmade by this grandpa. And like every time he sees like how much money he's made from the sales, he gets really happy. So I just really wanted to support him because it's just like it's so heart touching like knowing that someone handmade it with love. So I bought this little pouch. On this pouch I just have a little cloud dog patch. Um, this is by Johan Studio and I have this little pencil pin from The Forest Mari. And once you open the pouch, the first thing I have are these overpriced AirPods but they connect fast and they're kind of cool so these come in really handy when I go sketch in the park especially when I want to like close out all the sounds around me and just focus on my work I like having music playing at all times I have a bunch of pens these are just black felt tip pens and a Muji pen and I like using these for my ugly sketchbook it's just a variety of shapes and sizes and like hardness of the felt tips so I, I just really like having the variety in different black pens the ones I have here are um, the Meiso fiber tip pen the Muji 0.38 pen I have the Pigma FB Sakura pen I have the Pentel sign pen and then I have this zebra pen that doesn't have a name because it's in Japanese Next are some of my colorful tools. Um, these are by Posca and they're Posca markers because this is literally all I use when I go out to draw. Um, I really like using paint pens instead of bringing like a watercolor palette because I don't like bringing out like a jar of water, a bunch of brushes, my palettes and everything and like a paper towel. I prefer using things that are like more instant when you draw with it especially when you're out in nature because it's just so much of a hassle bringing all that stuff so I usually pick a few colors that I'm feeling that day instead of bringing like two boxes of Posca's with me because I think like giving yourself a limited palette to experiment with while you're out is nice because you're actually limited to that palette because you don't have any other colors except these Next, I just have color pencils. For color pencils, I like to choose the same colors that I'm bringing with my markers just so that it stays within the limited palette family. And so I just have the same like, like kind of same colors and I usually use these for textures. And I also like bringing a dark color pencil to like tie everything in because once you have like this many fun colors, a dark color pencil would be nice to like Add contrast. The last thing in my pencil bag is scissors and double-sided tape. Um, I really like bringing scissors with me because I like collecting leaves and like drying them and sticking them in my notebook sometimes. I haven't done it in a while but I kind of want to start doing it again. So I just have these like tiny little um, scissors. I think these were my mom's um, for like sewing but they're like really cute and then just double side tape from Daiso. I have this wallet 
my brother's girlfriend bought this for me like years ago and then at that time I didn't like pink at all so I just kind of kept it in my desk for like years until like I moved here and I realized I loved pink and so this is like the perfect shade of pink that matches everything I own it's like a dusty pink and I really like these small wallets for some reason I used to have like a wallet this big when I was in high school and then after I graduated college my mom bought me a wallet that was this big and it was like this thick and then I migrated into a tiny little wallet and I don't even keep this on me at all times I have like a like even tinier pink like stick on wallet to my phone that carries like two cards but yeah I, I just like tiny wallets I have this paper shoot camera I also got this in Taiwan and this is pretty much just like a digital camera that you can't see like what you're taking pictures of and the way you see what the picture looks like after is by putting this micro SD card into your computer it just takes really cute like vintagey pictures and I want to use it more the pictures you take with this are usually just like spontaneous and you don't know how it's gonna turn out so it's kind of just like fun to keep on you and yeah, it's just a fun little toy, I guess. I got some lotion. Also, this is really weird of me, but I like to bring like a small plushie with me because when I feel anxious or I just want some comfort, I like to just look into my bag and see like a familiar face <laughs> inside of my bag. And sometimes I don't even take it out. Sometimes it's just like in there and I just like look down and I feel comforted. But sometimes I also just kind of like, hey guys, how's it going? And then I just walk around with plush. I don't know, I'm 23, but I can still like plushies, right? They're cute. This one's by Oliver Jeffers, by the way. Um, he was the one that wrote the crayon children's book. The last thing that I have in my bag, water and snacks, because I want to try to drink more water and also, have snacks in case I'm hungry and these are just lucky charms not much to say about that they're just lucky charms yeah and that's everything inside my bag um, I'm going to head to the park now this is my comfy going out fit with my little walking shoes because we're walking today Kind of scary though. So I'm currently at this park and there's like literally no one here. Like why don't I come here more often? There's like no one and it's like so nice here.
I just wanted to quickly come on here and thank our sponsor for this video, which is Skillshare. And you guys probably already know what Skillshare is, but if you don't, Skillshare is this online learning community that has thousands of classes on anything creative or anything business. So I wanted to get back into daily sketching and I used to have like so many sketchbooks just full of daily sketches. I would just sketch throughout my day, things that I ate, things that I did. I had like travel notebooks and travel sketchbooks full of just daily sketches. And so I found this class on Skillshare that was really helpful. The class is called Sketchbook Illustration for All, Draw Your Day with Watercolor and Pen. And it's by Samantha Dion Baker. I feel like daily drawing is just so much fun and it really kind of unlocks like stylistically how you can grow. Daily sketching is great because it's like a journal entry. You can write down all your anxieties, all your worries, along with all of your happiness and you can just like put everything into it along with images and I feel like personally I remember things so much better when I'm able to illustrate it. Memories that I had when I traveled to Italy, I distinctly remember specific ones because I was drawing it's in my sketchbook. So it's a really fun class and I definitely recommend it. And for the first thousand people that click the link in my description, you'll get a free trial of premium Skillshare, which usually costs around less than $10 a month. And it's definitely worth it. I feel like there's so much you can learn from Skillshare and there's so many classes that you can browse and look through. And it's a lot more productive than binging Netflix all day. So if you want, please check them out. And thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. I'm semi over my fear and anxiety of like getting out of my apartment because I was scared for so long but it's actually really nice going out There's no one around me right now, so that's why I don't have my mask on. But I kind of wanted to like elaborate on why I was feeling anxious going out because I think I was staying home for like a long time. It, it was like a few weeks where I only went out for groceries and to send out mail. And so I think I just got very paranoid that something bad was gonna happen to me if I was to like go out and do something that I actually enjoy, like going to the park or like just going out in general. That's what I meant by um, I'm like trying to get over getting anxious of leaving the house just to go to the park because I also needed to exercise and I wasn't doing that because I was too scared to leave my apartment. I think I'm going to try going to the park more often and work out a bit more. We're back. We're back from our little outdoor session with nature. I feel like it was so worth it and I don't even know what I was so scared of, like going out and just being at a park drawing alone. Um, I definitely had to get over the social anxiety I had of seeing other people watch me film myself in public or just in general being outside alone. Like definitely before I moved here, I had major social anxiety uh, to the point where there were times where I would just hide behind people because I was scared. Like I would hide behind my friends because I didn't want to talk to the new person, especially adults. I was really bad at talking to adults. And after moving here to, into like my own apartment, I've grown so much like to the point where I didn't even feel socially anxious anymore and it was a long time since I felt that but after the pandemic started it, it kind of just like grew that social anxiety back of just like being outside and just 
being alone and being like super self-conscious having a hard time like talking to people or greeting people and I never want to come off as rude but I feel like I'm always rude because I'm like I'm like just quickly like scurrying away or like I'm avoiding eye contact I'm not saying hi to people or good morning to people I definitely want to work on that a lot more and this is like a baby step forward for me because I do feel a lot more confident in at least leaving my apartment and I think just being outside it'll make my eyes better because I won't be staring at a screen all day I'll actually feel like I've accomplished something in my day because it's more of like physical activity versus like a mental activity I do find myself like stuck in that uh like routine of like wake up work till it's 10 p.m pass out at like 1 a.m and then do that over and over again so this is kind of like me breaking out of my comfort shell again and just trying to do things that make me uncomfortable so it's really worth it if you guys are feeling the same way i definitely would want you to go outside and if you're too scared to go alone maybe bring like your roommate or like your mom or just go on a walk somewhere and if you're scared, it definitely helps to do it in the daytime because I would never go on a walk at night even if I'm in a really safe area. It's just, it is scary. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we will resume the studio vlogs next week. This week, I just really wanted to take a break from like filming everything I was doing. It was like a little bit stressful. So I just wanted to do something calming and relaxing for once instead of like always grinding out work and grinding out like big videos um, but i hope you still enjoyed it anyways and i'll see you in the next video and i hope you have a wonderful magical beautiful rest of your week and if it's cold stay warm drink a lot of soup soup is great and i'll see you next week Bye. Wow, I feel like my voice is gone. I feel like I've been talking all day. I usually don't talk this much. Bye.